don't play with me, I am life, uh -huh. don't play with me, I am life, uh -huh. don't play with me, I am life, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I am a child of Christ. Yeah. Shalom, Mespala. Welcome again to Reason and Truth Ministries. This is where we are continuing our beautiful study on the alphabet. Thus far, we have covered how much? 17 letters of the alphabet. 17 letters. Today, we are on the what? 18. 18th letter. You know, I was going to say 19. What's going to hold my mind? All right, that is why you must never trust the mind of man. Because we are what? We flawed creatures. We do make mistakes. <clears throat> and we have covered 17 letters, and tonight we're on the 18th letter. The 18th letter. And the 18th letter is the letter? Sadi. Sadi. Sadi, right? As you see it up here. Sadi. Some spell it with a Z, right? Some spell it with an S. It has a. Uh, Sadi, some put a E at the end, it all depends. Again, it's all based upon geographical location. The language is itself, Sadi. Sadi is three, uh, basically, <coughs> three words, you see, Sadiq. You see, if you watch here, you'll see Sadiq, right? You're seeing Sadiq, because one of the rabbi over the years, he added the, the kuf at the end, okay? But the name, of, the name of the letter is just, if we just remove this kuf here, sadi, sadi. So the, it, this is where now you have the, as you say, the E at the end. Because you have the yod, which carries the E song. The E, like I, right? The yod is an I or an E, right? So. It, it's an attachment, so it's a long e sadi. So it will have like a, a dot under the delete, but that is for when it's in the construct state or conjugated state. However, this is just the root of the word and it's the name of the letter sadi. All right, and the kuf is added for. We're going to see why the kuf is added even as we study this letter this evening. So thus far, we know our routine that makes us more acquainted and more familiar with the language. We know repetition brings what? Comprehension, right? And the more you affirm a thing, is the more it is what? When you affirm a thing... It, no, it, it more it become re, you, you you know it now becomes recognizable, okay. Affirmation brings, um, I don't remember it. But once once you keep affirming a thing, once you keep affirming a thing, um, you bring disclosure. You, that which needs to be known will be known. You will, you will see that person that is making that affirmation. Affirmation brings confirmation, that's it. Affirmation brings confirmation. So the more you affirm a thing, is the more you, you, that thing is going to be what? Confirm. Meaning, and this is what the world used by Peter Drucker and these guys in them with um, all these pop psychology and inspirational talk, a lot of affirmation that brings that brings what? Confirmation. confirmation. Affirmation brings confirmation, and that is what the world use. Should we use that? Yeah. Why not? Um, What's that? What do you say? Why we shouldn't use that? Because affirmation. Yes. Because they're devilish. Why do you say it's devilish? Because you just you kind of lying to yourself. No, you're not lying to yourself because what, who, what you are affirming, you are affirming something or someone. You with me? You're affirming something or someone. When you when you are affirming a thing, are you affirming yourself or someone? When that person affirm a thing, who get confirmation? Themselves. When you affirm a thing, so if I am affirming you, who want to get confirmation? You. I. 
Because when I affirm in you, I need to be what? Or recognize. Affirmation brings recognition. The more you affirm a thing, the more you get recognition. So if you affirm Christ, then that's different. Think about it. Okay. That's right. That's right. And so you hit the nail on the head. That's the one we ought to affirm. No one else. Because when we are evangelizing, when we're going for a job, when we're going for any type, when we start to teach, should we be affirming all these scholars? What we just do, we refer to data in order to give a statistical report about the data that we are using and to show the credit, credulity and the credibility in what information you are presented to anyone that is listening. Understand? So we ought to only affirm what? The absolute. Who is the absolute? Yeah, sure. We should not be affirming any. That's the only one that can confirm. Who is that? That's the who? Yeshua? Right. Yes, he's the only one that can, can confirm or affirm or recognize or bring recognition to what you are Don't say. saying. And who you are. Uh, right, and who now you represent. Because now when he brings recognition on what you are saying, is it on you or on him? So you see, now, if you don't understand those nuances, what happens there? You begin to take what? Glory in yourself. And you become proud. And you become lifted up. You become like <coughs> the has Hasatan. So this is why it's important for us to know who we are affirming. What we are affirming and what recognition we are bringing to our sure. cells. Should we bring any recognition to ourselves? No. Why not? Why not? Because we should be bringing recognition to Christ. And when you're bringing recognition to, self, to yourself, who are you glorifying? Who are you glorifying? Yourself. Yourself and who else? Exactly. Because once you're glorifying yourself, you're basically glorifying the devil. devil. Alright? So let's go back with some a rehearsal. As I write, you go over with me uh, in concert. Um, together, right? Vet. Vet. No, vet. Vet. Gamil. Come on, what happened? Where you all went? No, trust the mind. Let's go. Aleph. Aleph. Bet. Bet. Gamil. Bet. Bet. Okay, and over. Aleph. Bet. 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 Gamil. Delit. He. Wow. Zayin. Chet. Tet. Yod. Kav. Kav. Sofit. Lamed. Mem. Mem. Sofit. Nun. Nun. Sofit. Samek. Ayin. Pei. Pei. Sofit. Sadi. Sadi. Sofit. Kuf. 
Resh, Shin, Sin, Tav, Aleph, Bet, Vet, Gamil, Delit, He, Wav, Zayin, Chet, Tet, Yod, Kaf, Kaf, Sofit, Lamed, Mem, Mem, Sofit, Nun, Nun, Sofit, Samek, Ayin, Pei, Pei, Sofit, Sari, Sari, Sofit, Kuf, Resh, Shin, Sin, Tav, Ta, Shin, Shin, Resh, Kuf, Sari, Sofit, Sari, Pe, Sofit, Pe, Ayin, Samek, Nun, Sofit, Nun, Mem, Sofit, Mem, Lamed, Kaf, Sofit, Ta, Yod, Samek, Kamin, No, Tet, Tet, Zayin, Yod, Pe, Amin, Wav, Pe, Dalit, Gamil, Bet, 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 Aleph, very good. <laughs> All right, but then that, that is good. And you see, this is how you gotta remember it. Tav, sin, um, sh sin, shin, no, sin, sh um, sin, shin, right? And this is why you want to remember it. You want to remember it. Sin, shin, resh, kuf, sadi, sofit, sadi, kuf, sofit, um, 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 pe, sofit. P, Ain, Samek, Nun, Sufit, Nun, Mem, Sufit, Mem, Lamed, Kaf, Sufit, Kaf, Yor, Tet, Chet, Zain, Vav, He, He, Delit, Gamil, Vet, Bet, Alif. No, we gotta do it better than that. Yes, gotta do it better than that. But you want to remember it both sides. Okay? Because you want to be able to Say the whole alphabet backwards. Tav, Shin, going right down to Aleph. And when you understand it, you, 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 get to, you get to own the letters. Okay? You get to own the letters. All right. So we are at Sadi. Now, the name of the letter is Sadi. And this Sadi, what's the meaning of the letter Sadi? And if you, when you're writing the Sadi, when you're writing a Sadi, you always write the, the Sadi from the top here, straight down, across, and then like a Y. Okay? So this is how you remember how to write a Sadi. You write it from the top. If you're looking at the board, from the top, left, diagonally, down. Alif and a half thing. Right? Oh, not a half, but a That's right. It's looking like a, it have a, it have a similarity to the Aleph, right? Yes. Beautiful. Paleo Aleph. Uh -huh. Right. And you're seeing it. Good. You're seeing the Paleo Aleph. And what the sages and they taught, and you see you jump into the teaching also. This is the... Bride to the to the Aleph. This is the husband and this is the the bride. Right? This is the bride to the Aleph. It's very interesting how that is there. However, we'll get into that if we if we happen to in this evening teachings. Okay. Um the numerical value of Aleph is Help me. If if pay is eighty, how much is ninety? That's right. See, and this is seventy. This is sixty. This is fifty. This is forty. Right. This is no, no. This is not forty. Is forty. This is forty. This is thirty. This is 20, this is 10, this is 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay? And you see, these long letters, they don't have a number yet, right? But they're there. Okay? And we're going to see how those... Let us get numbers after we 
we finish the, the olive bed. Okay? And <clears throat> this sadi, it has two forms. It has a form in the beginning or the middle of a word, and it also has a form at the end of a word. And this is called the sophit form. This form here is the sophit form, and it is written at the end of every word. Okay, and a word that that uh, we all should know what word is that who get that word is that who get that word is that reads right what is that land yes very good land it reads, you remember you're hearing it? It reads. And he created the it reads, right? It reads, which is land. Okay, huh? Good. And this is land. So now this is a very interesting letter. How do you, you see how at the end it takes on the Sophie form? Okay? And if you look at this 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 letter, if we just take this iron and we place it with what would you feel this is going to spell <coughs> eat what is eat come on tell me who was eat What's that? What's it? Huh? An itza. It's an itza. This is tree. It. Right? It is tree. Like tree. And this is itza. And what you could tell me what is itza. You know what's itza? See the Zara. This is Kongsu. This is Kongsu. She likes to speak and to teach or to give information, to give instruction. That's why. Think about it now. So you see now, and eat, which is Kongsu, is like, and there's another word for branches. <laughs> but you see what eat does it is a tree and eat what does what a tree does it gives what nourishment it gives food it gives all that which is necessary for what for life okay so we see that this letter in itself it has something to do with what with life and nourishment and 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 that which will cause health and growth in this life okay so and even to get counsel, so if you look at this word here, right? To get counsel, it's in the middle. You must be what? Bent over. You must be humble. Okay? To receive counsel, you must be what? Humble. But now when you receive counsel, now you become like a, a tree, an oak tree that is ready to stand on its own. Okay, so now you are erect with what? With your hands lifted up. So you see the sadi at the end is given glory. It's, 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 it's that which is accepted now in, from all its, its work throughout its time. And this is the finishing. This is like totality. So now the, 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 the numerical value for Sadi is 90. 90 speaks about the what? 9 is what? What is 9? Completion, complete, fullness, that which is complete, that which is full, right? Remember that? Right? That which is complete, that which is full. Remember? Right? Are they helping me? Okay. That which is uh, this is where you this is where you make decision for life. 
and the decision that you make will determine your, 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 how you live this life. But this sadi, this sadi speaks about what? It's nine multiplied by 10. So that gives you the fullness, this is the, the totality of life. This is life to its, its highest form, completed form. So life in its, in its complete state, in its ultimate state, because it's multiplied by what? The power of 10. Now look at something. Look at something. This letter This letter, which is, the name is Sadi. The meaning of it is a what? Who can tell me what is the meaning of a Sadi? It's like, what is this here? A sperm? No. Oh, I don't know. This is a man on his side. Wait. A man on his side. It speaks about, no, one who is in the bush, who's hunting. One who is hunting, one who is on his side, hunting. It's also known as a fish hook, or perhaps a trap, also known as a bird trap. One who sets a trap, right? Which is called a sod. Sod. You see, sod. So it's sod. Son. Okay? Son. And this is what they call a trap. Okay? So now we're seeing that this word is sadiq. And this it means a trap and that which which a man he hunts for. It's also known as a letter that is bent over one of it's also the meaning of this letter is who can tell me what is sadiq righteous. righteous that's right righteous and that's that word in itself is a very beautiful word because you have a lot of word that comes from this word these a lot of words and every word that has this this root, it has a similar meaning, like Sadiq, which is a righteous one, a righteous person. You get Sadiqa, which is righteousness. You also have Sadiq, Sadiq, right? Sadiq, Sadak, right? We just change the, the vowel pointing. You have a Kamatz under, you, you just put a Kamatz. Or petak, sadak. Okay, sadak. And that is, that is what Audi, the Yod. Sadak is to justify. Okay, um, C, C, just samik. Sadi. Remember we talk about the husband and the wife? See, see, it means to go forth. So you see in this word in itself, you're seeing how everything has its relation to that of the, the father and what he is doing with his bride. And Zion, or Sion, we know it as Zion, right? But Zion is start with a Sadiq, Sadiq. Yod, Wav, Nun. So now, and Sava. Like Sava, like if I put a Sava, Sava, that means to command. So we're seeing that this word Sadi, it has to do now with a person's state of being a person, the way a person position themselves in, in this life. The way you position yourself in this life. And this letter, 
This letter, the Aleph, the Sadi is the bride to the to the Aleph. The Sadi is always the bride to the Aleph. Now, when you look at the Sadi, which part of the Sadi is located to the Aleph? The right. The right side. Okay. And who Yahweh told to sit at my right hand? Yeshua. Yeshua, right? And where is Yeshua's bride? Where is Yeshua's bride? Yeshua's bride is in him, right? Yeah. In himself. Mm -hmm. So now, Yeshua's bride is at the right hand of the Father in him. Because he said, make us one. A dot. A dot, which is the oneness. Like Ahad, a dot is just the, 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 the plural or that oneness. Oneness of what you call that which Hashem has called us to be in relation to his bride. So we see now that scripture here, even with the word that go forth, who is sending forth? Because that is what the word mean, right? This so so sa sa means to go forth. Because remember the Aleph is silent, right? Sa. And he's saying go forth. And where you're going forth? Where are we to go forth? Where are we to go forth? In, the world. in this world. And why are we to go forth in this world? We are to go forth in this world to make his word known. This is very important. So now, this letter, which has a numerical value of 18, okay, is 19. This is like the um, atomic value. It has a numerical value of 18. 18. Okay? And we see this here um, atomic structure, when it's multiplied, it's coming in its fullness. And we see the numerical value is 18. Now, this letter has a construction of And A yod, a yod and a bent over noon. A yod and a bent over noon. I enjoy it too nice, but forgive my joy. This is a construction of a yod and a bent over noon. A yod and a bent over noon. So now, this little letter, which is a noon, which is bent over, and we know that which is bent over is what? Submissive, submissive and humble. It's humble in its very state. And the Yod is, a, is the right hand of what? Power or fellowship. Who hands, whose hands is that? Is the hands of the creator. Is the power of Hashem. So we see in that this letter in itself, it's a small letter, but yet it's carrying a what? A great deal, a lot in it. It's carrying a great deal in itself. Because this letter which represents righteousness, it's by its structure, it's humble and it's carrying the hand or the weight of God. It's carrying the weight of God all the time. And his hand is always lifted up because it's that which is ascending, which is going up, always going up. So we see now. Uh, in a pictorial form or in a constructional form, we've seen how important this letter is in, 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 in relation to us, humankind, as we apprehend what these 
letter mean? So we have the name, we have the meaning. The song is like za, like pizza, yep. Z song, T Z song, or some people say T S. And this is where you have now you get the letter Z from. This is where they get the word, the letter Z. So this is the origin of that letter Z. And the picture of it is a man who is hunting, who is seeking to trap his food, to catch his food. He's very vigilant. Where? In the wilderness. He's out there. He's a hunter. He's hunting for his prey. And yet still, when your hunter is hunting, well, how you got to be? You got to be silent. You got to be vigilant. You got to be watchful. You got to keep your eyes open in order to what? Apprehend your food, your sustenance. Because a righteous man only take what he, only eat what he catch in hunting. That's what a righteous man does, right? He eat what he catch in hunting. He doesn't just do it like how most people in today's world, they go on hunting for just what? For fun. But they hunt in order for what? People in the world today hunt for, in order for sports, whereas Back then, they, they hunt in order for what? For food, for provision. All right, are you with me? All right. So now we're seeing that this letter, it has a bent over form before the middle, before and in the middle, it's bent over. It's in a humble state. And this letter, it has a relation to do with life. It has to do with life. All what you need for life is found in this letter. Now, interesting enough, this letter, it's nowhere close in the first 10, nor the 15, but it's way down close to the end of the alphabet. Why is that? Now you become a righteous man. When you become a righteous man, you're, you're very close to the end. Now, that is interesting. Close to the end of your life is when you become a righteous man. To the end of your life. But we know it today, life is very short. Life is, uh, how much is ascribed to all mankind? Three scores and ten, which is 70 years. So now, When a person, when they're dealing with times and event, you see now the progression of how we go through stages in life. At five years old, a person should study the scriptures. At five years old. This is how the sages and they taught their entire household. At five years old, you should study scriptures, Torah. At ten years old, the Mashiach, The Mishnah, you should study the Mishnah, right? Which is the writing, all the Mishnah, the, 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 the commentaries. At 13, the commandments. You're studying scripture, you're studying Mishnah, you're studying the commandments. You're studying the all of Tanakh, so to speak. By the time you reach how old? 13 years. At the age of what? Mitzvah. At 15, the Talmud. Talmud, Talmudic writing is like the Babylonian Talmudic writing. That is now what they have to complement the writing. That is what they say um, Hashem also gave to Moshe, which is, we know is not true. It's just their, their commentary and how they, through time, has passed on this writing. And this writing, it wasn't written together with the Tanakh, but it was written after it came along, after the Torah the Tanakh, so to speak. At 18, the Bride Chambers. Right? At 18, the Bride Chambers. Meaning to say, you need to be what? You need to be wed. First, with Hashem. Second, with your husband or your wife. So you see how early, why, it is, why you think they married so early in the culture of, to keep you what? To keep you
Well, you're righteous. To keep you righteous. To keep you righteous. This is why you married, they, they marry early in those culture. And, and sometimes we in the West, we have a problem with even the Eastern culture, how they marry very early. But there is a reason, there is a strategy to their madness. Because a parent will never do what is bad for a child. Then, we know we live in a totally different culture now, where parents are telling their children, you are not a girl or you are not a boy. You will know what you are when you feel and how you feel as you go through time and you go through events, right? And that is what our culture is teaching. At 20, for one's life pursuit, at 20, you want to know what you want to pursue in life. At 30, for an authority. So now at 30, you become an authority in something. Something. Whatever you, 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 you are drawn to, that is what you're now going to become an authority in. At 40, for, I remember we talked about this, discernment, where now your discernment is sharpened, you know how to notice things, you know how to discern because you're led by the Spirit of Hashem. At 50, for counsel, right? Now you're given what? Counsel because you're what? Your hakma, that's right, you're right. Remember we talk about that? 50 is when he got wisdom. At 60, to be an what? An elder. Where now you are an elder. So now we've seen all these different structures in churches where people five uh, 30 years old and they're elders and what have you. And they're as ignorant or as dumb as a doornail. They're as dumb as a doornail. Because the Bible talks about the gray hair and the wisdom of the gray the gray here, right? We don't have that today again in our culture. At 70, for gray here, 70, gray here, so it's like you're fully, you live to your fullness, 70, full human life, which is complete. At 80, for special strength, special strength. And at 19, for decrepitude. 90 is decrepitude, right? Where now everything started what? Decay, started to get passive, started to get weak, decrepit, started to be weakened. Why is that, you see, at this age, so we're seeing that everything in this life at a certain time is gonna get what? Weak, and it's gonna just come to what? Decay, it's gonna come to decay. And if we realize that this, in this life, things are going to come to decay, even when we are righteous, man, we, we are sadiq. There is now a responsibility on each and every one of us as we strive to be a righteous man. Who have... Somebody find Matthew 6.33 for me. So we've seen how this letter, it's little, but it's carry a lot of weight. To be a righteous man, you must be just, humble, and kind. Just, humble, and kind. And the two Hebrew words, what, what is a word for kindness and um, humility and um, good uh, kindness? What is the Hebrew word for kindness and goodness? What word is this? Has said. What is has said? Hesed is kindness, goodness, right? Hesed. And what is then? What is then? This is goodness. And what is then? Look at them, what is then?
You see what is then? What is then? Oh, look, come on, work with me. What is then? Judgment. Judgment, right? So we see in then is judgment and chesed is what? Goodness. So we, and we know that Hebrew word chesed and chesed speaks about goodness, kindness, loving kindness, goodness, right? So now we ought to be righteous men, but then righteousness, who is a righteous man? Abram, right? He was a righteous man. And righteousness have its relation to what? Righteousness have its relation to what? Because in order for you to be a righteous man, you must have what? Good judgment. Good? And you must be what? Kind and generous. Right? You must be kind. You must be kind and generous. So now these two must merge. They must come together in order for us to live a what? A righteous life. So we see in that righteousness was ascribed unto Abraham and certain men in scripture. Just as um, um, Job, Job, he was a what? Job was the most righteous man of his day. Good? Just man, just, as what I just said, what I just said, he was a just man, right? Because he had good judgment. He weighed the judgment, he weighed the consequences. And there's a other Hebrew word for judgment also, or for judge, which is shafot. Remember we talk, and that is what the, the judges, his name, like if you open the scripture, you see, judges, shafot, that is what his name. But that shafot is speaking about a what? An individual judgment. You were you judging yourself. When the Bible says, when you come to eat one with another, this is how now you're going to be judging yourself. You're going to be doing shafot. Last shafot. To judge oneself. Last shafot. La shafot. So that is lamid shin pe wav tet. La for shafot. Good? And that is to judge one's, that is to examine oneself. This here then is to do what? It's to make a judgment on a situation. Who was the judge? Daniel. <laughs> Are you familiar with Daniel? Daniel, again, Dan. Daniel. You see? So what is it saying? Where is L? Judge of God. That's right. The strong Yahweh, the strong teacher, who what? Judges. You see? <laughs> Yahweh, who judges? So Daniel is the judge of Hashem. So we see in that to be a righteous man, to be a Sadiq, you must have these two. You must be kind, gentle, good, humble, but at the same time, you must have good judgment. Here, yeah, we have to do that because he said, oh, you, you are not judged by men or of men, but you shall judge even what? So. You're first, but we shall judge what? Angels. We shall judge even angels. So you see, it's a high responsibility that is placed on us. So now, in order to bring these two together, to form this, 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 this responsibility to be sadiq, to be righteous, we must, these two have to be in us. And how, how we can live a righteous life, a life that is righteous, that is sadiq, that is sadiq in Hashem, sadiq in Yeshua. How can we live a life that is sadiq? Because now, when you look at these two words, judgment and kindness, it has a relation. You, when, you, when you're judging and you, you care for people's life, you have two words that you're dealing with. You're dealing with well, what is that? Life and um, Oh. 
Emuna. What is Emuna? What is Emuna? Faith. Right? Faith. Emuna is faith. And that is what it is. Now, when you spell Sadiq, you see? Sadiq. Sadiq and Emuna, there are, there are similarities between Emuna and Sadiq. Now, to be a righteous man, you see, you're talking about kindness, which is which one Abraham showed forth, and this is then which now which his um, his son is what Mos Moshe received from Hashem, the laws. So you need Sadiq and you need then you need the two to combine. Who combined these two? Yeshua, right? Yeshua combined these two in Ahav. Yeshua combined these two in a have. What is a have? Love. How you establish how, how love is, how love now is given to all of us or to all mankind through faith. Through faith. But we don't see faith as this Western world see faith. What is faith? Faith is in a physical person, faith is a tangible element, right? And faith is in that one person, okay? And who, who's, who our faith is in? Yeshua. Yeshua Mashiach. This is where our faith is. So our faith is done in faith. And the only way how we can be a righteous man, our faith must be in him. So now, okay, let me just put these two words together here so, so you can see it clearer. Watch this. Sadiq Sadi Sadiq and you have Emuna Okay what is the what is uh, the numerical value of Sadi is ninety? Ninety. How much is Delit? Four. Four. Yod. Ten. And Kuf. One hundred. Okay. So if you add, so how much you get? Two hundred and four. 204. Aleph is 1, Mem is 40, Wav is 6, Nun is 50, He is 5. How much is that? How much is that? 102. Right? 102. You have 50 and 40 is 90 plus 12. 102, right? So now look at something. If we look at this, so we're seeing a righteous man, it must be double. Double what? Double your faith. Double your faith. Uh, somebody can find um, Isaiah. Isaiah. 64, 6 of me. 64, 6. And in scripture, the Bible talk about, the Bible talk about man's righteousness. Man's righteousness. And we see that man's righteousness, when the, the Bible talk about, always talk about two righteousness, the righteousness of man and the righteousness of God. And what Hashem gave us in order for us to be like Him? What did He give us? His Word. His Word. So the only way we can come to His standard, we must live in His, in His Word. But we see throughout time, no mankind have ever measured up to Hashem's Word. 
They have always what? Messed up. However, we see these men, they come close to this. You found this scripture? Can you somebody read it for me? Yet no one invokes your name, rouses himself to cling to you, for you have hidden your face from us and made us melt because of our iniquities. Okay. Yeah, was 64 6. Isaiah, Isaiah 64 6. 64, 6 yeah. What do you have? How are you? It says, um, All of us have become like something unclean, and all our righteous acts are like a polluted garment. All of us wither like a leaf. Isaiah 64. And our iniquities See. carry us away like the wind. You be five. No, six. That's six. No, that's five and nine. Okay, well, right. Some in, in um, if you your Tanakh is gonna be in the Tanakh is gonna be in the is gonna be a little diff, um, different the verses because the way the translators and the translated, right? And now I love to read from my what? My most holy King James, right? So now I hear what the most holy King James says. Sixty four six. Hear what it says. But we are all. But we are all as an unclean thing. Well, thing is added, unclean. And all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquity, like the wind, has taken us away. Right, so you see what Hashem is saying. So now we have righteousness and our righteousness is going to be what? It's going to be judged. Your righteousness is going to be judged because we see can atheists and agnostics and non-believers in Hashem do good things? Could they do good things? No. Yes, they could do good yeah, things. They could do good. they could do good things based upon what we innately know is good. Moral, ethics and what have you. They can do good things. However, those good things is based upon our, and this is why a lot of people say, but look at the atheists, they're nice loving people, look at the homosexual, they're very nice, the law abiding, they're growing their children nice, and uh, all these nice words that they use and they're saying this is good, but by whose standard? Their standard, that is their righteousness, and it's a stench in Hashem's word, knows, read it, read it. Read from 60 to 66, and you're going to see what he said. The, 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 all the, the incense and the aroma that sent up to him is, is a cinch in his nose because it's polluted, it's defiled, it's not pure. But the only way our righteousness can be pure, you see, this Sadiq is a double, right? Sadiq has two or four, and this have a match? One or two, right? But this Sadiq here, this Sadiq here, in order for us to be righteous, we can be righteous in ourselves and just live this life just like this. Or we can come to the end of our, of our life and be in this state. A man standing up with his hands up in the air, victorious. Who does this look like? This look like, right? It looked like him on Calvary, right? In a state, in a state that is what? Decrepitude, decrepit, weak, broken, death, the finality, completion as a man. Because what he's showing us there, in his righteousness, in his righteousness as he lived this life, he's showing us that every single thing on this earth will come to what? And end. It's weak. It's polluted. And it will die. It, will, it must die. So you see, in his righteousness, in his death, we are made alive. We are made alive in his death. In his death, we are made alive. We are made totally alive. Watch how we are made totally alive. Look at something. This 240, 204, right? When you, 204, watch what is going on. 
Two and four is how much? Six. One and two is how much? Three. Okay? So now you're seeing man in his state. This is man in his complete state. So you could stay without Hashem, without Yeshua in yourself, and you think you're righteous in yourself. Okay? So you think you're righteous. You're righteous. And this is Yeshua. This is Yeshua. This is Amuna. This is, this is, this is where your faith needs to be. So now when you, when you now take yourself and you put yourself in Him, three into six is what? Is what? Two. You see, the three must go into the six. The this word must come into you. That's the only way now you are what? Cleanse. The only way that you are make pure. Now, the two that is now in you is who? Yourself and? The word. Hallelujah. Yourself and the word. Yourself and the word. Yourself. Because now you are now given rights to who? The word in you. So you are now letting the word be what it needs to be in you. You're not grieving the Ruach HaKodesh. You are allowing the word and you see it right there in Sadiq. So now for you to be a righteous man, you must be bent over. So now you can lift your hand like Mashiach in this life and in the life to come. Because at your death, this is how you're going to be. This is how Stephen was. Late not to their charge. Late not to their charge. And we've seen what the closeness that this word have with, with life. Because all of this, you got to bring these two, kindness and judgment, to life. You have het and you have emet. You have Het and you have Emet. Now, these two words, this Emet and Het and Emet, life and truth. Watch how it has a relation to Sadiq. Sadiq is what? 18, right? 18, right? And Sadiq is 18? is 18. Now, Chet is how much? Yod is how much? How much is this? 18. Aleph is 1, Mem is 40, Tav is 400. How much is that? 441. Which is equal to? How much? Nine. It is equal to nine. So you're seeing that in order for you to be a righteous man, in order for you to be a righteous man in this life, truth brings what? Truth brings what? Oh, come on, work with me. Truth brings what? Life. This is life. This is hell. Hey, hey, lachie, hey, life. And you see, non completeness, fullness, because you only get, you only have life when you have, when you first is exposed to what? Truth. So, in order for you to be a righteous man, you must first have what? Truth. Truth is the precursor to what? Righteousness. So we're seeing that with truth or in truth, you now become what? Sadiq. It's only through the truth of Hashem, Ruach HaKodesh, because He is the Spirit of Truth. Listen, this letter is telling us that when you bend, who are you bending on? You see the ayin, is the, the the word, the richness of Hashem's word that now the eyes see and it is now within the, the, the heart of man that now brings it to the mouth 
All that which is now internalized and that which is, has been seen in Hashem's word is brought out through the mouth, through the pay. And now as you bring it out through the pay, you are now establishing it in righteousness. So your walk, your talk, your disposition, everything that you do is a bent, is bent on what? is bent in his word as you stand to mankind in your walk you stand with your hands uplifted high declaring that he and he alone is lord and king and his word is what you echo his word is what you speak his word is what brings you and establish you as a righteous man so when men see you when men declare anything about you they are declaring it about whose righteousness Whose righteousness? His righteousness because his righteousness is based upon your faith. And your faith is in Mashiach. So you're seeing your faith, your Amuna is built upon his Sadiq. And his Sadiq is now what establishes your righteousness. Because your righteousness, look at something now. Your righteousness, look, watch, how, watch how beautiful your righteousness is. Your righteousness now, remember this is sad. And what sad, what remember what I say sad do? What sad does? What sad does? What sad he does? What sad he does? What is another word? Another word? Hunt. Trap, right? Hunt or trap. So now you're seeing sad. And this is what? Kuf. What kuf is? We haven't reached kuf yet. We're going on to kuf right after. But what kuf is? Kuf is a monkey. So now, what this word is literally saying, for you to be a righteous man, just as your inside, it must reflect on your outside. That reflection, it must be clear. What you speak is what is in you, is what is coming out. Out of thy belly shall flow rivers of living water. So you are now a mirror image of him who you represent who are we to represent we are to represent yeshua mashiach so now sad means to trap what you're trapping you're trapping your monkey what's your monkey your nephish you know what's your nephish your nephish is that animal aspect of your being that impulse that drive that passion that wants you to do what you feel you ought to do so when you trap your monkey what you're literally doing you are now bringing your entire person under the will and the authority of who yeshua mashayak this letter is telling us and is teaching us that in order to be a righteous man first you you must acknowledge that your righteousness is not in yourself, which is 204. But your righteousness must be divided or it must be, it must be in the amuna, which is in the trust, in the established faithfulness of Mashiach that you now rely upon that this two-ness that is in you is his word directing you. His word is teaching you. His word is giving you all that which is right so now you can continue to be what? Sadiq. Because we can't be Sadiq in ourselves. If we are Sadiq in ourselves, we're going to be like in Isaiah 64. 6. Our righteousness. That is how the Jews. And this is where he told the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he said, look, all the righteousness, your righteousness must exceed those of the Pharisees, if your righteousness doesn't exceed them, you can't enter into his kingdom. Your righteousness must exceed the scribes and the Pharisees. Must! Because they see it in themselves. But we only see righteousness through who? Through the Emunah. Through Yeshua Mashiach. He is the establishment. He established trust because he wants a relationship. And the only one that can establish trust is a person who establishes establishes trust and a person who establishes trust must must fulfill every single thing that he state and the only person that will fulfill everything that he said but not totally because he still has to come back is Yeshua Mashiach he rose from the dead 
he gave unto us the blood of the lamb, the blood of the goat, and the blood of the heifer. He gave us those three blood. So we are sinless. We are no longer under judgment. And we have no guilt. For we confess with our mouth that which we believe in our yacht sword, in our mind, that which we now rely upon his word and we walk in his righteousness because his righteousness is that which has established us. For in um, Habakkuk 2.4, he said, no, the just shall live by faith. The just the just, you who, were, uh, who have been justified by the justice of Yeshua is now living in his faith. He now become your scapegoat. He now become your heifer. He now become the one, the blood that, that cannot be seen but washes the conscience. Your conscience so there is no guilt Listen, Yeshua is our righteousness. He's our Sadiq. We are Sadiqim. We are righteous ones. And that is what we have been called to demonstrate. Listen, and I don't get through all these scriptures. When you go home, when you over the internet, and over the network, you guys can read Matthew 6.33, Romans 1.17. Galatians 3, 11, Hebrew 10, 38, Habakkuk 2, 4. You can look at those scriptures and those scriptures has to do with righteousness and you can read Psalms 1, 19. Um, you can read through it and you're going to see the, the righteousness that Hashem and there's a Sadiq, Sadiq, which is the letter Sadiq. It speaks about and it begins even with a Sadiq and Sadiq is highlighted in order to show you more insight into the righteousness that we have been called to. We are not called to live in our righteousness. Our righteousness, as Isaiah 64, 6 says, it's like what? A woman stay free. Menstrual pad. A woman menstrual pad that has been in a corner there just decaying. That's how our righteousness is like. That is what it is like. This, what we think. We are good. But there is none good. But our emuna. So when we say we have faith in someone, or we have faith, we have faith in someone. Not faith in faith. Not faith in things, but faith in a person. And his name is Yeshua Mashiach. And we can now go to yod heh wav because of Yeshua Mashiach. So we go to yod heh wav because Yeshua Mashiach gave us access. And we talk to the Father because we have direct connection. And this is the man that gave us direct connection. And he said, now because of his friendship, work, you now can go to the Father. We can all go to the Father. Listen, this evening, righteousness has come but first you got to be bent over and you see all these sadic letters you see it it stands with hands erect you see yeshua end with his life with his hand lifted up father into thy hands i commit my soul his hand outside outstretched like that to mankind and towards the father because what he's saying to us all this life, this life, you can be fooled and think that you are a righteous man. But if you don't know him, you wouldn't know what is righteousness because you are blinded. This eye, this eye can only, can only see itself if it's not resting on the Samek. And if it's only resting on the Samek, then it's only going to speak with pride and hostility in itself, erect, bold. But if we are humble, if we are humble and we are bent over, 
our hands will be lifted like him. And now we can go on to present the mirror image of Hashem to this world, which we're going to look at next week, the pay. The pay which speaks about the horizon and the sun. Ah, beautiful letter. The horizon and the sun, the two sides, the mirror image of what we ought to be, who we ought to reflect. The pay, are you bent over? Are you a righteous man? The only way you can be righteous is in Yeshua Mashiach. He came and he said, come, I am your lover. I want to be your lover, but he can't force no one. What he do? He say, hear me, hear my words. And if my word touch your mind, touch your yatsud, touch your lev, by his chesed, you don't need his judgment. When he comes back, you need his judgment now. Because his judgment now is sadiq, is righteousness. It's a transaction he gave to us. He gave it to us so now we can be righteous as he is righteous. Read Romans 6. Thank you for being with us. I'm going to see you next week. Shashalom. Uh -huh.